the future has already happened. In the 1960s, scientists started to realize that if the core tenet of relativity is true, that there are no privileged reference frames, then the past, present, and future must all be considered equally real. The physicist C. W. Ryatijk in 1966 and the mathematician Hilary Putnam, in 1967 used relativity to argue on the basis of the relativity of simultaneity that all events, past, present, and future, are equally real. Quote, I conclude that the problem of the reality and the determinateness of future events is now solved. Moreover it is solved by physics and not by philosophy. We have learned that we live in a four-dimensional and not a three-dimensional world, and that space and time, or, better, space-like separations and time-like separations, are just two aspects of a single four-dimensional continuum. End quote. Hilary Putnam, Time and Physical Geometry, 1967 The relativity of simultaneity tells us that any event, in our past or in our future, is in the present according to another reference frame. So if every reference frame is as valid as any other, i.e. no preferred frames of reference, we must accept the equal reality of all events. The Andromeda Paradox This idea was best illustrated by the mathematical physicist Roger Penrose, in a description now called the Andromeda Paradox. Quote, Two people pass each other on the street, and according to one of the two people, an Andromedian space fleet has already set off on its journey, while to the other, the decision as to whether or not the journey will actually take place has not yet been made. How can there still be some uncertainty as to the outcome of that decision? If to either person the decision has already been made, then surely there cannot be any uncertainty. The launching of the space fleet is an inevitability. In fact neither of the people can yet know of the launching of the space fleet. They can know only later, when telescopic observations from Earth reveal that the fleet is indeed on its way. Then they can hark back to that chance encounter, and come to the conclusion that at that time, according to one of them, the decision lay in the uncertain future, while to the other, it lay in the certain past. Was there then any uncertainty about that future? Or was the future of both people already fixed? End quote. Roger Penrose, in The Emperor's New Mind, 1989. Here two observers, let's call them Alice and Bob, are standing right next to each other. They meet at the same time and place, say the sidewalk at noon. However, according to relativity, because they are walking in different directions each belongs to a different present moment. Their presence contain different content. If Alice is walking in the direction towards the Andromeda galaxy at 3 miles per hour, then her present contains Andromeda as it is 4 days in hour, at rest, future. If Bob is walking away from Andromeda at 3 miles per hour, his present contains Andromeda as it was 4 days in our past. Given that a week's time difference separates Alice's and Bob's versions of Andromeda, in Bob's present, aliens in Andromeda might plan to convene and vote on whether or not to launch an invasion fleet on the Milky Way. While in Alice's equally valid present, they have already voted and the invasion fleet has already launched. So Alice's present contains events that are in Bob's future. Likewise, Events in galaxies Bob is walking towards and Alice is walking away from contain events for Bob that are in Alice's past. How can this be? Understanding the Andromeda Paradox It is merely a consequence of clock desynchronization, played out over astronomical distances. Usually we think relativity only comes into play at very high speeds. But if the distance between clocks is large enough, the time difference can be significant even at low speeds. The distance between our Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy is 2,500,000 light years. Imagine an absolutely huge rocket that reached all the way between Andromeda and the Milky Way. If this rocket traveled at 10% the speed of light, a clock desynchronization of 250,000 years would appear between a clock at the front of this rocket and a clock in the rear. 
The tail of the rocket would be 250,000 years in the future. If the rocket traveled at 1,000th the speed of light, the clock desynchronization would be 2,500 years. If the rocket traveled at just 3 miles per hour, the clock desynchronization would be 4 days. If this giant rocket traveled towards us at 3 miles per hour its tail would be 4 days in our future. Likewise, if it traveled away from us, its nose would be 4 days in our past. We can understand the Andromeda paradox once we realize the rocket is not needed. All we need is for Andromeda to be moving relative to us, such as when we walk towards or away from it, for the time of Andromeda to run ahead of or behind us. As it happens, Andromeda and the Milky Way are falling towards each other. They will meet in a great collision 4.5 billion years from now. See our episode, How Will the World End? Because galaxies are mostly empty space, most stars and solar systems will survive this collision unharmed. Though some may be ejected from the galaxy to drift in the darkness of intergalactic space. Conclusions? Special relativity is one of the most strongly confirmed of all theories in science. But its implications go well beyond space and time. Learning the true nature of time, as described by relativity, fundamentally changes our notions of reality, self, and existence. In some respects, special relativity's implications even venture into the religious domains of creation, free will, and eternal life. Can there be creation when the past, present and future have always existed? What is free will when the future is already decided? Does the existence of events in spacetime mean we possess eternal life? Let's review the implications of special relativity in more detail. Implications for reality Reality is what's real. By convention, we assume only the present is real. But this is not based on any scientific fact, just on how we feel. We feel as though we are moving through time. This feeling makes us believe we are in only the present. Therefore, we think the past no longer exists, and the future is yet to come. But might this all be an illusion? A trick one's mind plays on itself. If we take the implications of relativity seriously, then the past, present, and future hold an equal claim to reality and existence. Four-dimensionalism? Relativity offers another way to view reality. One wherein every event exists perpetually in its location in spacetime. It is analogous to how every frame of a movie reel exists, even when not actively projected to a screen. Within every frame, we believe ourselves to occupy our time, the time we believe is the present. But each of us in each time feels that way. Which one is right? What time is it really? According to relativity, the word now becomes like the word here. Neither word reflects a property of the universe, but instead reflects a property of the person speaking it. Quote. Just as we envision all of space as really being out there, as really existing, we should also envision all of time as really being out there, as really existing too. End quote. The physicist Brian Greene in The Elegant Universe, 1999. The view that the past, present, and future, are all equally real is known as eternalism, also called four-dimensionalism or block time. Eternalism follows directly from special relativity. We have seen length contracted objects can reach through time. They exist in different points in time at once. This is impossible, if there is only one present moment. Further, we have seen the relativity of simultaneity shows there is no single objective present. We each define our own present as one particular cross-section cut through the block of spacetime. But if all points in time exist, what accounts for change? Why do we feel as though we move forward into the future? Is change an illusion? Philosophers have long debated whether change is real or illusory. Some 2,500 years ago, 
The Greek philosopher Parmenides argued that existence is timeless and any appearance of change is an illusion. Quote, what is, is uncreated and indestructible, alone, complete, immovable and without end. End quote. Parmenides in the Way of the Truth, circa 475 BC. Since the time of Parmenides, this question was considered to belong to the domain of philosophers, not scientists. It took science thousands of years, but special relativity has finally proven Parmenides right. In four-dimensional spacetime, change, as a future coming into being and then disappearing into a non-existent past, doesn't happen. Quote. It appears therefore more natural to think of physical reality as a four-dimensional existence, instead of, as hitherto, the evolution of a three-dimensional existence. End quote. Albert Einstein in Relativity, The Special and General Theory 15th Edition, 1952. This was not just a quirky belief of Einstein. It remains the present understanding of modern physicists. Events in spacetime are interrelated by causality, like adjacent points on the graph of a function. Special relativity provides a framework to understand how events are interconnected within an unchanging four-dimensional structure. Just as we might say the value of a graph f of x changes with respect to x, we can say an object's position p of t changes with respect to time t. This accounts for the appearance of change and motion where objectively there is none. All the positions p of t across all times exist, just like all the points on the graph exist at once. Why is the future unknowable? When an object reaches through time, it extends into both the past and future. This means, at some level, the future is real. We get further evidence of this from antimatter, antiparticles seem to enter our present, arriving from some future point in time. According to the spacetime view, future events are every bit as real and determined as past events. This means the future is already written. All points in time exist. Yet in each time we have stored memories only of the past, we have no memories of any future time. What accounts for this asymmetry? If the future is real, why can't we remember tomorrow? Time's arrow. The unknowability of the future has nothing to do with whether or not the future exists. Whether the future exists or not, or is predetermined or not, Physics explains why we have no knowledge of it. It is an artifact of how our brains process and store information. According to thermodynamics, energy can only be expended in the direction of time along which entropy increases. Since processing and storing information requires an expenditure of energy, our brains, or anything that uses energy, can only operate in one direction of time. The direction in which entropy increases, from past to future. Some events that are common in one direction of time are unlikely in other directions of time. For example, it is common to see someone jump into a pool, but we've never seen water molecules spontaneously throw someone out of a pool. It is the same with systems that process information. They can't operate going backwards in time. If they could, we might see hard drives manifest pictures taken tomorrow. Since entropy increases from the past to the future, our brains can only operate along that time direction. Accordingly, we can only store memories of the past, memories of the future are impossible. Our deeply ingrained belief in flowing time and an unknown future is not due to the non-existence of the future, but rather physical limitations on how systems are allowed to process information. See our episode, Why Does Time Have an Arrow?